So I grew up in Mount Vernon and Snohomish here in Washington. And then I went to yeah, art school in Paulsbo. And then I moved to Seattle and became a barista to, you know, become a famous artist. That was my plan. I would just be famous. And then, you know, the rest will just fall into place. I don't really have to plan it because, you know, all the fame, you know, <laughs> that was my plan. I guess when I look back, I guess that was my plan. And I never had lived in a city and I didn't realize that when you live in a city, you have to care for the forest because I'm from the forest and where I'm from, there wasn't tons of ivy. There was the start of Blackberry and I see it now, now that it's been, you know, 25 years, I see it more and it's, and it's spreading and it's becoming a larger issue. But where I grew up, I was in native plants. So this idea to restore a forest or garden in a forest, I was like, that's not, that's not real. Um, but it is real and it's very much needed and it's my job. And so I've always leaned towards, if we don't have a planet, we don't have anything. And so my art always took that path. Um, I enjoy hiking. I enjoy getting out. I find that the forest is a place of healing. I want to make sure that's there for the next generation. Oh, and then like I want, you know, clean air and water and, you know, wildlife to have homes. And, you know, I don't want to be in a heat dome and all those things, too. <laughs> Uh, my current pathway is like, that's kind of how I got there. Um, school wasn't something that was like, it was important to go, but it was important to do it, but it wasn't like studying. I didn't have parents that were pushing me to go to college. I didn't really talk about careers. You know, it was in school and I am a girl. So I was like told librarian, teacher, right? Like a very small window, like this is women's work. And you could have jobs doing this type of stuff, or you could like be a crazy woman and you could like be like a firefighter. And like outside of that, no one talked about green jobs or environmental jobs, or even, even just saying that I was going to go into art was like so dicey because that's not, it's not, that's not a career. Right. So um, I think my focus was probably a little more on survival when I was in high school. Um, but I will say, and I find this true and I tell people this, there are things and there are people in your life that will keep showing up and they're, and they're telling you something. They're telling you about your deep interests. They're telling you about your passions and what you care about. Uh, I've always been a people person and then I got involved with environmental arts and building art for the environment, talking about uh, climate crisis or wildlife. Um, and then through that vein, I found restoration I became a volunteer coordinator. I ran large events. I worked, I started building big markets for arts. And then I got really good at events. And at the same time, I was learning about restoration. I became a volunteer coordinator for restoration. And at that point, kind of the two of the environmental arts and restoration kind of married. And I worked in the nonprofit sector. It was a lot of fun. We did a lot of work. We did a lot of good. Then I took a break from restoration and I was just a full-time artist for a few years. And then an opportunity at the city of Tukwila came up for events and they were just onboarding a restoration program. So I applied, got a job for events. They were like, oh, you've done restoration. Boom, 2017 handed me the Green Tukwila Partnership. So I have a very alternative path on how I got here. Don't dedicate your entire soul to that job forever. Everything is a stepping stone to something else. Sometimes it's a stepping stone within the same company or even within your own job, right? And so don't, don't get so busy with the day-to-day -to, -day to not invest in the next step. I always say make time for trainings, make time for certifications, make time to network. And when you do network, always present yourself positive, um, the, especially in the environmental field. It's a small group of people. It's a, and you'll just keep circling through them and they'll be like, oh, now I'm at King County or now I'm at Dirt Core now. And it's the same. I have worked with some of the same people through multiple jobs. I just had somebody come out for a volunteer event and then um, they wanted a job in the environmental field. I thought they would be a good fit for Dirt Core. Turned out Dirt Core was hiring. So they reached out to have an interview with me. We talked about Dirt Core. We talked about the work we did, this and that. I sent an email to Dirt Core and said, hey, person volunteered. They were great. They're really interested. They dirt core interviewed them and hired them. Person took the time to invest in themselves and to network. And it, and it bumped them up in that interview process. 
And the, the other piece of advice I have for the environmental field, if you have a few months to do a job training program like Dirt Core, I think it's important to do the physical side of this work and to understand the grind uh, creates a really great balance. involved locally. Meet the people who are doing the work in your area. Get involved. Make things happen. You know, be somebody who makes tangible change. Know what you're passionate about, and hopefully for this conversation, it's environmental issues, and become an influencer. Start that conversation. So often we just get bogged down in the negativity of blah, 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 or this, that, and that. There is a lot of really great things out there. You go for a walk, take a litter picker. Not a big deal. You can give yourself one, you know, bread bag size and say, I'm going to fill this up on this walk. That's that much microplastic that's out of our watershed. I want all voices in this environmental conversation. So be it, be an influencer.